Hello, dears, and welcome to Al Husseini Virtual Lab Pathology Talks Tips and Practical Tips. What I'm going to be sharing with you today is a case of a recently described entity CNS embryonal tumor with the plaque family gene amplification. So this is a case of a three-year-old female patient who was found to have posterior fossa mass that was resected. And as you can see here from the low power magnification, this is a fairly cellular tumor with the proliferation of uh, in a way spindle to round uh, 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 blue cell tumor with the scattered areas of calcifications and somehow rich vascularity. Now the low power magnification might give an impression of uh, ependymoma in particular. This is a slightly high power magnification. And what really first catches the attention is the abundance of mitotic activity that is seen throughout the tumor. So in a way, this is a mitotically active tumor. And the tumor cells are more or less monomorphic. They have this oval shape to round the nuclei, fine chromatin, giving in a way an appearance that might be resembling some embryonal tumors. And then there is some fibrillarity in the background. Now, in some areas and on higher power magnification, we can see further aggregation of the tumor cells tendency sometimes at what might appear to be like palisading of the tumor cells. And there is a tendency for perivascular arrangement, not really quite the typical ependymal uh, pseudo uh, pseudorosettes, perivascular pseudorosettes that we usually see with ependymoma, but certainly it is in the differential diagnosis. And in other areas, there is streaming of the tumor cell nuclei with some neuropel-like appearance of pink material in the background. In one focus, there was an area of necrosis, in particular, palisading necrosis. And honestly, what came to mind at that stage, whether this is a high-grade glioma or this is an ependymoma. Now, given the age of the patient and the location of the tumor, ependymoma was favored. GFAB was then ordered. And as you can see, there is some positivity of the tumor cells with GFAB. Not all tumor cells are positive, but there are certainly some tumor cells like the ones here and here, for example, and here, for example, that are positive. And then there is this uh, uh, vascular, minimal vascular proliferation. Now, with the EMA, as we would expect in ependymoma, we look for the presence of intracytoplasmic dot-like positivity in order to support the diagnosis of ependymoma. Now, what is usually uh, expected is to find at least five tumor cells showing this dot-like cytoplasmic positivity. The presence of the scattered positive cells would really be a quite uh, un accepted, I would say, for a confident diagnosis of ependymoma, but in this tumor, scattered positivity was seen in some of the tumor cells, not really the typical positivity that we would like always to see in ependymoma. Now, all it to, as you know, with ependymoma, you have to see loss of the nuclear stain in the vast majority of the tumor cells with some a faint staining in nuclei, attenuated staining in the remaining, in the presence of positive internal control. So if I look at the OLEC2 immune stain in this tumor, in particular in this field, I would say that most tumor cells are negative. There are some attenuated stains uh, uh, staining tumor cell nuclei, and we have internal positive control that is fairly uh, uh, robustly positive, which means that our uh, marker is working on very well. Now, the uh, H3K27M uh, trimethylated was ordered because the tumor is in the posterior fossa in an infant and in which the ependymoma was the primary focus for the diagnosis. And as you can see here, this is the internal control, for example, of endothelial cells. The tumor cells appear to be less strongly positive than the internal positive control. And again, this was internal interpreted
depicted as probably attenuated staining pattern. The CHI-67 showed increased proliferative activity of around 20%. Now, the primary diagnosis that was given to this case is posterior fossa ependymoma, type A, given the age, the location, the morphologic appearance on the HME, as well as the immunohistochemistry. But recently, we acquired a, a, a methylation profiling for uh, tumors, in particular, of course, central nervous system tumors. And this was one of the cases on which methylation was performed. And to our surprise, the case came back as CNS embryonal tumor with a plaque family amplification with a calibrated score of 0.98, which means that we're almost certain that this is really the diagnosis. So the final diagnosis in this interesting case is CNS embryonal tumor with the plaque family amplification. This is a newly described tumor entity that occurs in the central nervous system and can only be diagnosed utilizing advanced molecular diagnostics including uh, methylation profiling of the tumors. Now, the plaque family amplification uh, tumors can be divided into plagal 1 and plagal 2 uh, family of uh, tumors. The plagal 2 family of uh, tumors usually occurs in the posterior fossa in infants, similar to our uh, patient. And since the uh, 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 appearance of the tumor is usually similar to ependymoma, it's not uncommon common for these tumors to be diagnosed actually as ependymomas. Some of the tumors have an embryonal uh, tumor-like appearance. And again, if we look back into the case, we can really uh, uh, suggest an embryonal appearance as well of the tumor because of the appearance of the tumor cell nuclei and the abundance of the fibrillary neuropel in the background. Now, experience in this type of a tumor is still a it's, in its beginning, we're not quite sure of the natural history of, uh, uh, of the tumors and of the exact way of diagnosing uh, uh, and treating these uh, tumors. Now, the diagnosis, as I mentioned, can only be rendered using advanced molecular uh, diagnostics. However, you have to keep, to keep this possibility in mind, in particular, if the morphology deviates from the usual typical appearance of ependymoma and if immunohistochemistry in this particular case, the EMA was not really the typical strong or the widespread EMA positivity that I would expect with ependymal tumors. I hope you find this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.